Hello there, out there in Gail Borden Public Library community. Um, <laughs> you just keep adding more to it every single episode. <laughs> Hi there, people watching Channel 17 and YouTube and Facebook and wherever you're watching us from. Um, thank you for watching us first. But as the weather gets cooler and the library gets even more inviting, we're inviting you here for tons of events here in November. And we're excited to talk about those and here we go. Hi, I'm Liz. I'll be talking about the Festival of Trees and to our wonderful Lego builder, Riley Wygen. Hi, I'm Karen. I'll be talking with Tabitha from Kidspace about the U46 STEM Expo kickoff. I'm Laura and I will be talking to Tish about the voter registration. Hey, and I'm Denise and we just completed this wonderful trip back from Ashland, Ohio, we, where we brought a full-size bookmobile to this community and uh, we're going to see a little bit about it uh, in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Liz Clemens. I'm here today with 13-year-old Riley Wigan, who is bringing some of his fantastic Lego creations to Gail Borden Library through the end of December. Hi, Riley, welcome to the library. Hi, thank you. Riley, can you tell us what are the skyscrapers you're bringing to the library? Uh, I have the CN Tower, um, the Golden Finance Center, Great. and the Transamerica Pyramid. Great. And about how long did it take you to build these? Um, I, the Transamerica Pyramid I know took me somewhere around three to five weeks. And um, the Golden Finance Center, uh, including reconstructing and re-engineering everything, um, took me about five, four or five months, I'd say. Wow. And the CN Tower took me about six months. Wow. And you're also bringing some Frank Lloyd Wright inspired structures here to the library? Is yeah, that right? yeah. I have the Peterson Cottage, uh, the Boynton House, and the Zimmerman House. Wonderful. And what is the biggest structure you're going to be bringing here? Uh, the CN Tower uh, is probably the biggest. I think it, when it's all put together, is six foot three. Oh, wow. Okay. And I understand you're still building a bridge here that we're going to have on display? Yep, still setting that up. And that's the San Francisco? Uh, it's the Mackinac Bridge. The Mackinac Bridge. Great. And tell us a little bit about what inspires you to build these fantastic structures. Uh, it could be anything from seeing the building in real life or um, seeing pictures off Google or anything like that. Great. Are you working on anything coming up? Anything exciting you're planning that you'd like to build? Um, not right now. Just right now, just trying to reorganize all of my parts at home. So then after that, I'll start a project. I don't know what yet. Though. Okay, great. Great. Well, thanks. Thank you very much, Riley, for talking to us today. Thank you for interviewing me. Thank you. So don't forget to check out our Lego display here at Gail Borden Library starting October 15th. Hi, I'm Karen and I'll be interviewing Tabitha from Kidspace. Tabitha, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. I'm the coordinator of grade school services at the Gail Borden Public Library. Awesome. So Gail Borden is excited to host the STEM Expo kickoff. Do you kind of want to share what the kids can expect from this? Yeah, so the kickoff is going to be November 14th and 15th. Um, the 14th it will be here at the main library from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night and it will be at the um, Rayco branch on the 15th from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night and the kids can um, expect to have lots of science. STEM um, stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And so you will expect to find lots of um, that going on. Um, there will be different vendors from all around the Elgin area um, talking about science, talking about engineering, math, and bringing different technologies to um, the event as well, including 3D printers or um, even some, some different types of technology um, from places around Elgin. So That's so great. Yeah. And I heard that um, some of our kits from the library are going to be brought. 
out for yeah. the kids to use? Yeah, so Kids Space will be represented among those um, participating as vendors at the event. And we will be bringing um, some different technologies that we have in our library. Um, one, for example, is going to be the Lego WeDo's, which are simple robotics um, using Legos and ties in perfectly with the exhibit that yes. we're having right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we're also going to be bringing out our STEAM kits, um, which are in our youth center room in the big red cabinets that are the best kept secret at, at the library. <laughs> um, and inside those cabinets, there are all sorts of different um, types of engineering tools and kits that kids can um, build and put together. There's one about bridges. We even have a telescope and a microscope scope in there that the kids can check out um, and take home and use at, at home. Um, so th those will all be, uh, well some will be at the event, um, some that are in will be at the event, um, but hopefully we will have a slim pickings to choose from because um, a lot of them will be checked out, but yeah. we will have some um, at the event too. So Awesome. Um, and then the main STEM Expo is going to be in February. Mm -hmm. um, what can we do at the library that can help the students kind of figure out what kind of projects they want to do for Absolutely. the science fair? Yeah, so we of course have a giant section of science books. You can head to the 500s or you can come ask a librarian and find a whole bunch of books that um, will help inspire the kids for their science fair projects. There's also books that detail um, a million different kinds of science projects that you can do that have directions and supplies and um, you can talk about hypothesis or hypothesi, I guess, <laughs> with the kids um, and, and what that means to create um, a, a hypothesis about something. Um, you can also, um, of course, come to any of our STEAM programs. Those happen on Monday nights at the main branch and they happen on, I believe, Thursdays at the branch. Um, but check the calendar as we're always switching around our dates and events. Um, and then we also have just a lot of staff members who will be happy to help research and um, find resources that will connect children to these different types of curiosities that the, they'll be interested in looking for during the STEAM Expo yeah. in February, so. Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks for uh, chatting with us, Tabitha. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Awesome, yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Laura and I'm here with Tish. Tish, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Tish Kalimer and I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at the Gail Borden Public Library. So we're talking to Tish today to talk about the voting, um, the early voting that can, um, that is taking place at the main library. Um, who can actually come to vote at the main library? Kane County residents in all Kane County precincts can do early voting here at the library. You can be either already registered or there's also grace period registration, which means if you are not registered, but you intend to vote on the same day, you can come in and register as well. You do need to be 18 years old uh, and a Kane County resident. Good. Um, somebody just asked a question on Facebook. Um, can anyone vote early or do you have to do something extra? So what do they need to bring? Um, what to show up at the door and be ready to vote, what do they need to do? Good question. For early voting, you do need to have some sort of photo ID with you, with your address on it. There's a voter application form that you fill out. For election day, all you need to do is show up. The election judges look everybody up, so that's how they know if you are a genuine bona fide voter. Good. Um, for registration, um, do they need to bring anything apart from their ID to register or? All they need is a photo ID with their name and their current address. Okay, that's all they need. What are the dates that people can vote at the library? October 22nd through November 5th is early voting and then the general election is Tuesday, November 6th. However, keep in mind that for the general election only select Kane County precincts may vote and those are precincts number 9, 13, and 17. Good. Um, for election day, um, if you're not, uh, how, how would you look up which precinct you're, you're on? You can go to canecountyelections.org if you live in Kane County and Cook County Elections uh, if you live in Cook County to find out your polling place. And if you need help, feel free to call the library's information desk at 847-429-4680 and they'd be happy to look that up for you. Good. 
Um, do you have any other um, programs that you're involved in that you would like to talk about? Well, if you're uh, gearing up to vote and you're civically minded, we invite you to come out to the RACO branch the second Tuesday of every month for Illinois Speaks. It's a public discussion group. Uh, once a month on Thursdays, I believe it's the third Thursday, uh, we have Government 101, which is all the fun the Constitution test leaves out. Elgin Township Supervisor Franklin Ramirez is the host, and he brings in elected officials and appointed officials from various levels of government, and they talk about their offices. So if you don't know what a controller does or what the uh, tax assessor does, you can find out, and it's really a lively and engaging program. Great. Thanks for, thanks for showing up and talking about all the voting and all the events that you can be um, a member of. Thank you for the opportunity, Laura, and just remember, get out there and vote. Hi, I'm Carol Metal, Executive Director of the Gail Borden Public Library, and Denise Raleigh, who is Division Chief of Public Relations and Development. And Denise, what are we standing in front of here? What is this big blue bus? Uh, this big blue bus is our brand new bookmobile for Yay. Gail Borden Public Library, <laughs> yeah. We now have a mobile branch, or we soon will be. We have to do a lot of work yet before we get it uh, on the road. Right. But it's here, and now we can start planning. How did we get this bus to Gail Borden Library? Well, it was quite an adventure. We picked the bus up in Ashland, Ohio, and we went through Indiana and Illinois, and we thought it'd be a fairly easy trip. Well, it turns out that was the day where we had terrifically high winds. We had snow, we had rain, we had a little bit of ice. <laughs> so we thank the two bookmobile drivers that helped bring this. Uh, Dennis Raleigh, my son from Fountaindale Public Library, and Terry Scallon from Arlington Heights Memorial Library. She's the one who taught Dennis the bookmobile business. And when they weren't white knuckle driving, they were talking about how fabulous it is to bring bookmobile service to a community. So I hope you get a chance to see some of the Facebook uh, videos that we, that we have filmed as we crossed the country with the one that wasn't driving. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was a lot more challenging than what yeah. we had anticipated. Well, there was a small crowd here. We were, we were anticipating it might come between 4 and 5.30 last Saturday, but it came about 6.15, and we were so excited to see it round the corner yeah. because we know what this is going to be able to bring to the community. We will have a mobile branch that will bring our services out within our 65 square miles of our library district. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic. So you will see if you watch some of that video from our arrival that there was a kind of a zombie Lincoln. And that yeah. was Councilman John Steffen, who also is a member of? The Kiwanis Club, who we are very, very appreciative and grateful for because they are supporting uh, our being able to bring this bookmobile to our community. So thank you, Kiwanis. Yeah, and they have a long tradition. They supported our readership band. Yes. And so their support for literacy has been outstanding, and we are so proud to have the Kiwanis on the side of this uh, bookmobile. The other big funder, of course, right now is our... Is our Gail Borden Public Library Foundation, and they have supported it from the get-go, and we are just so grateful for them, too. Of course, who made the decision was our Library Board of Trustees. So thank you, trustees. Uh, they certainly saw the need and uh, what this bookmobile could bring to our community. And I think we use the term game changer. Yes. And, yeah. and how, just in a real shortly, how, why is this bookmobile going to be such a game changer here? Because it's going to enable people to receive library services that are unable to get to our main library or two branches. We're going to bring the library to them, and we are going to be determining where those best spots are uh, that we can reach the most people that do have uh, uh, challenges getting here to a building, and that we can bring books and DVDs uh, to them, and um, we are certainly going to be uh, um, uh, emphasizing the services to our children. That's what Kiwanis was so interested in because 
their mission is all about serving children too. There's going to be chances to support the collection. We're still fundraising for the collection. So uh, again, you can contact Carol or myself if you're interested in supporting the collection that's gonna go on this bookmobile. But we'll be talking about this bookmobile for, from, for many uh, days to come. We're just so excited that it is here. It's, it's home now. It is home now. It is home now. And so stay tuned as we uh, complete everything we need to do before we roll it out onto the streets. Yeah. And if you watch a little bit of that video, I loved Terry Scallon's line where she said, uh, a bookmobile is like an ice cream truck, only better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. Hi, I'm Liz Clemens from Gail Borden Library. Once again, the library will be welcoming the holidays early. Every year, we host the Ecker Center Festival of Trees. This year, the trees will be on display November 1st through 9th. Visiting us today is Kay Catlin from the Ecker Center. Hi, Kay. How Hi. are you? I'm fine. And yourself? I'm good. good. I'm good. good. I just wanted to ask you, you know, every year people go up and ask us, why do you have holiday trees on display so early before the holidays? Can you give us an answer to that? Well, the, the short answer is great <laughs> art takes time, so we have to get started early, but um, we employ helpers and volunteers and decorators from throughout the community and it gives them a chance to get it done before their crunch and it gives us a chance to uh, share their work with the community. Great. And after that, after we, uh, on the 9th, we take them to where we're having our annual gala, the 18th year. And where's the gala this year? This year it's at St. Charles Country Club and the, all the trees that are have been donated uh, and decorated have uh, will be auctioned off uh, to the attendees at the event. Great. And where do the proceeds from the auction go to? The proceeds go to support the programs and services of Ecker Center and we provide services for a wide variety of behavioral and mental health uh, issues for the community at large. Have been since 1955, I might add. <laughs> great, great. So where can people get information about uh, They can go the... to our website, uh, www.eckercenter.org. Um, they can drop by where the stuff is going out now, the collateral and materials. Um, for sponsors, for people who'd like to attend, for people who'd like to donate auction items. We have a signature auction that is just crazy wild with very cool things. We're really appreciative of Gail Borden's assistance with this. We, we kind of think that the whole Festival of Trees is, is, is like a metaphor for what Gail Borden means to the community aside from the normal library services. There's all kinds of activities that bring the community together and, and this is one of them. Yeah, and every year we're really excited. We can't wait to see how the sponsors have decorated the trees. There's surprises every year. Um, there's all different kinds of trees with anything you can possibly think of. Uh, some years we've had uh, trees decorated with cars, some with dolls, some with purses, <laughs> shoes, uh, anything you can possibly think of. And uh, we also have um, traditional uh, decorated trees too. One of our highest earners was a Charlie Brown tree. Oh, that's it right. wasn't a tree. It that's was right. just a stick. <laughs> but the people mm -hmm. enjoyed the humor of it. <laughs> so please come visit the library um, and ring in the holidays early, November 1st through 9th at Gail Borden Library. Wow, there's a lot happening in November. Uh, anything else before we sign off? Well, um, at the library we have some pretty cool programs and one of them is Elgin and the development of Art Deco. And we're going to have a presentation on uh, Art Deco design for compact cases and watches and Elgin's role in that and that's November 28th at 7 o'clock. And is that with the History Museum? Yes. Yeah, is. because there's a whole exhibit over at the History Museum. Uh, and I want to talk about the STEAM, uh, specifically the 3D printing. Um, it's in the computer training room, grades 4 to 8. 
Um, they do intermediate 3D printing, um, that's Saturday, November 3rd, and then they do advanced 3D printing, and that's on Saturday, November 17th. <laughs> and speaking of science and um, like nature and, and all of that, um, we are, we are, we're having an adult aquaponics gardening class at the Rako branch, um, where you can learn how to start your own aquaponics system that combines agriculture and hydroponics. And there will also be great new gardening tips for this chemical-free and sustainable technique. And it's gonna be presented by the Max McGraw Wildlife Foundation. Ooh, ooh. November 6th. Oh, November 6th. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also gonna be talking science, uh, trash talk, with recycling with guru Robin Magala. And that's going to be Sunday, November 18th at 1.30 p.m. And that's going to be, they're gonna watch the documentary Racing to Zero and Pursuit of Zero Waste. And then they're gonna have a discussion afterwards. So that should be really cool. I also wanna talk about one more item that it's wonderful that our public libraries are doing this. If you're a writer and you've got a manuscript uh, pretty much done. The soon to be famous Illinois Author Project has a brand new contest this year. We are taking submissions starting November 1st and that's soon to be famous dot info. And that one, the winner of that contest will win a line editor and a cover editor. So this is really new this year and it's the person who wins will also go be automatically entered into round two of the soon to be famous Illinois Author Project. So we're really excited to offer that in, in the, through the Illinois libraries. So again, thank you for watching. Please send any questions or comments to gbtv at gmail.com. Thanks very much and I hope that you have a wonderful November.